Hi friends, my name is Sherry and I'm part of the media ministry here at Spring Hill. And I am at this beautiful Dover Foxcroft property where Sunday, October 29, we will be hosting our community event called Trick or Trunk, where we invite all of our neighbors to come and enjoy a fun, family-friendly atmosphere of time together. We're going to have decorated trunks, we're gonna have music, we're gonna have bounce houses, we're gonna have a whole lot of opportunities for people to connect and develop relationships. And that's really what one of our missions is at Spring Hill, is to meet our neighbors where they are. And so we wanna make connections with people in our community by hosting Trick or Trunk on this gorgeous property on October 29th. That's Sunday from two to four. So today I have three F's for you. The first F is for fun. We want you to have fun. We want your friends to have fun, your family, your coworkers, invite them out to come have some fun on the farm. We're going to have bounce houses and activities and face painting and music and all kinds of fun things to do. Hay rides and barrel rides and just a lot of fun. And we want you to enjoy that. This is such a beautiful place and God is so good. God is so visible in this property that we want you to experience that fun too. Second F, family. This is a place for families to come together, to enjoy an afternoon together, just having fun, just being in each other's presence, just having a good time together and, and, and enjoying an afternoon as a family unit. At Spring Hill, we are all about family and we wanna encourage that. So number three is food. We Baptists can't have a gathering without food, you know? So come on out for some food. We're gonna have free hot dogs. We're gonna have vendors who are gonna provide local wares. We're gonna have a cakewalk. We're gonna have all kinds of food available. We want you to enjoy that experience. So Sunday, October 29, from two to four, we'll meet you right here at Dover Foxcroft Farm. Now let's worship together. Hello, thank you for joining us in worship today in person and online. Uh, my name is Brian Malott and I serve here at Spring Hill. We're excited about worship today and appreciate very much that you joined us here in person and for those joining us online. For those online, we would love to hear from you in the comments. Drop us an emoji and our online host will respond. We believe that each and every one of you is here with us for a reason. God is moving and is amazing how he moves in us and through us. We would love to get connected with you. The easiest way to do that, whether you're online or in person, is through text. Text the word CONNECT to 434-423-5300 and get in touch with us. You can also use our QR code, our one-stop shop, for more information. So part of worshiping is recognizing God's provision for us and giving back to God. This can be by praying for ministries and each other, volunteering and serving here at Spring Hill, and also by giving financially. There are several ways that you can give at Spring Hill. You can text the word GIVE to 434-423-5300. You can go to our website to give. You can give in person or by mail. Uh, when, you're, when you give, you're helping Spring Hill reach our neighbors where they are to share the good news of Christ with compassion for the lost and needy. Your prayers, giving, and serving allow Spring Hill to help many people. Again, thank you for joining us in worship today. If you could please bow your heads for a quick word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for the day that you provide us. We thank you for the beautiful fall colors you painted for us. Lord, we thank you for the ability to worship here in person. Lord, as you touch each one of us today, as you reach us, as we hear the word, uh, your word, um, we pray that you're with us and you send us out into the field. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen.
with us as we begin our time of worship and song. All right, get ready to clap. <laughs> Spring Hill kiddos and families, we are talking about Jonah 1, 4 through 17. He made a decision and it affected other people. I thought I would use my cold as an example of like current times. So we are in the like cold season and everyone's getting colds around us and stuff. And so I have a cold 
and it probably came from something I touched and maybe I didn't wash my hands right away or I breathed it in the air and I didn't know somebody was sick or, or something like that. But it's bound to happen. We're all going to get colds. We don't need to be afraid of germs, but we need to be mindful of our decisions about germs. So blow your nose, wash your hands, cough into your elbow, all that type of stuff. I love tea when I'm sick, so I'm going to drink a little tea. Mm, I put honey in it. It helps my throat. What are some things that you guys like when you're sick? I know my kids like to color or they like chicken noodle soup or beef, beef vegetable soup. Um, one of my favorite things when I'm sick is going to the Chinese restaurant and getting wonton soup. That's, that's my favorite. That's my go-to. But so Jonah, we'll talk about Jonah. He made a decision and it wasn't about germs but it was a decision to not listen to God. And it caused a ruckus on a boat in the middle of the sea. And it was scary. So pretty much he fell asleep and everybody was like, what are you doing? Call on your God, help him, ha have him help us. And so he jumped up and he was like, oh man, this is my fault. And so he was like, just throw me in the, in the, in the sea. Like, I can't even imagine telling somebody to throw me into the sea. That's crazy. But he knew that, I guess that's what he had to do. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. For you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard and the raging sea grew calm. That's crazy. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord. So it sounds like God used Jonah's bad decision for something good. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. That is so cool. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Wow, I can't even imagine being in the belly of a fish. That's just bizarre. But Jonah should have listened. But it sounds like God's just gonna take him to Nineveh. And I think that's what happens. So, when God asks us to do something, we should probably listen. Our, our actions affect other people. Not washing your hands can get someone else sick. Coughing into the air and not coughing into your elbow can maybe get someone else sick. Going to school when you're sick, all of that. So it's really important to take care of our bodies and wash our hands or use hand sanitizer and... Um, drink lots of water and eat our vegetables. I know moms and dads say that so much to you kiddos, but it's true. Drink lots of water um, and eat your vegetables and stuff. But I hope you all have a great Sunday and that's all for me. By the way, wouldn't this be the elbow pit? I'm just saying, because can you really sneeze into your, okay, let's stand and continue to worship this morning. Let's raise a hallelujah.
raise a hallelujah because my weapon is our melody and heaven comes to fight for me. Thank you for joining us in worship and we're going to sing and let um, just the king of our hearts know that we worship him. Amen. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom of my heart, oh, he is my song. You are good. How's everybody? All right, all right. It's good to see you guys today. Morning, I appreciate that. Man, you guys are awesome. I'm, I'm not joking. And uh, Siri's listening to me right now, too. I just saw her little face show up. You think I'm joking? She did. She was right there. Hey, listen, this is a great day, isn't it? Yes. Great day. Homecoming last night. Got some tired people in the house today. Anybody tired from homecoming? I see some sleepy people. If... Chris, you weren't at homecoming last night. I just want you to know that. Okay, good. All right, so, uh, man, what a great day. Beautiful day outside. The fall colors are everywhere. Uh, it is an amazing day to be in the house of the Lord. And so, um, I'm... Uh, I'm super excited. I always have a hard time knowing exactly what to say when I get started with a sermon. So it takes me a minute to just get to see your faces and hear your voices. And I'm serious about that. I got to know you're with me a little bit. I got to see a little head nod like that one right there. I got one head nod. I got a couple of thumbs down. You guys in the back row, y'all good in the back? Okay, good. I appreciate the big wave back there, Bill. It's awesome. 
Uh, you know, I was thinking, as, as I'm in the back, I can never prepare in the front. I always have to be in the back before I get up to speak. And so uh, I'm in the back, and I look out the window, and there's a couple people out in the parking lot, and they're listening online. And I look in this room, and y'all are in here doing your thing. We're in this room. And then I thought, how many people are connected around the world right now? You know, there are people all over the place watching this sermon and watching this worship service. And we're gathered in this room, but we, we have to remember that we are all one body and we're in a bunch of different places. We're all in assignments. You know, I got friends in Texas this morning. I got a message from my wife. Kelly is watching today. And so I got to be extra good. I'm like really nervous. <laughs> and so um, it's so exciting. Think about that picture with me just for a second. Let's just kind of focus in on, on that for a second. You have God, creator of everything. First, he puts this world together, breathes life, speaks, it all happens. His word makes it all happen. It, he formed it with his heart, with his words. He gave all of us a body. We're all sitting in here. We're people all over the place. I just got a ding on my watch. Somebody's probably messaging me right now saying they heard what I just said. And then God says, all right, here's, we, got, we got something for you today. When I was in seminary, I remember my preaching professor. He always said this. He said, Scott, when you walk in a room and you're preaching on a Sunday, even if you don't feel it in your heart, you walk like you have something to say. And he did. He said, even if you don't feel it, you show up and you, you, you with your body language and with everything in you, you show up and you... you you let them know there's something coming. And so I just want you to know this morning, I don't have to act. I don't have to perform. I don't have to do anything this morning because I am so convinced that what the Lord has given me to share is for me and us and I believe Christians around the world. So is anybody else with me this morning? Okay. Very good. We got some clapping even in the back. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right, so here we go. Let's pray again. And uh, Lord, we just love you so much. We thank you for allowing us to have a relationship with you. And God, we thank you for your presence. And God, we thank you for your love and your extravagance. And God, for your call on our lives. And Lord, for the way you work and the way you've moved in our lives through all these years. I love you, Jesus. It is so exciting. To be in this spot this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, I really do love the Lord. And I love the way He works. And I love His messages. And I love the way He works through people. I just got a text message from somebody many of us know. And it, all it said was, I'm with you. We need a lot of people in our lives with us right now, don't you think? So that's a little side note. I've got a little opening story. For you. So uh, guys in the back are going to be tired with their fingers this morning because we do have 38 slides. And so uh, I know 38. And so here we go. We're going to kick it off with my good friend Nugget. I want you to see a little picture. OK, hold that picture. So this is uh, the little girl is not Nugget. <laughs> that's Macy. So that's our youngest daughter. And uh, that's Nugget. OK, that's our little pet pig. So meat nugget. Let's look at the next one. There's nugget. Let's go nugget. Come on, let's chant. Nugget, nugget, nugget. Here we go. Get ready for it. You got to wait for the big ending. Get ready. Get ready. Here she comes. It's going to be exciting. Look out. Look out, nugget. Okay, way to go, nugget. Oh, jump in the pool. All right, that's good. That's a good job, nugget. So let's look at the next one. I think there's one more little one. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay, that's the wrong one. Go. Okay, hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Bump back to the pool for a second. Just go back there. Y'all pretend you didn't see that one. This little pig showed up at our house from a friend. They brought it over, and y'all, it was literally about this big. And they told me it was a miniature pot belly pig. So some of y'all know where I'm going with this, right? And so we're like, you know, what do we do with this pig? You know, it's a little pig and it's cute and all that. And I, I'd been around some farm animals in my life, but I'd never owned a pig. We'd never raised a pig. And so we get this little pig, Nugget, and we're like, Nugget is cool. Look at Nugget. Nugget one day, uh, there was a short period of time where Nugget got to live inside our house. 
Oh, okay, good, grown with me. Because Nugget, we came home one day and Nugget had grown and Nugget decided she wanted to go into our, take a little nap in our living room on the couch. And so she nuzzled her way into the middle cushion inside the cushion. She ripped the couch apart. And we came home and all we could see was Nugget's like back end hanging out. Yeah, so Nugget was ushered into the backyard officially. She became an outside pig, of course. So anyway, Nugget was a little ball of joy when she showed up, okay? And then some things changed over time. And so now let's jump forward into that next picture, and you can kind of see. This is Nugget still trying to get in a pool. <laughs> so we have some dogs, too. That's the, the Nuggets and our, our dog's little water container. And I know, and then I think there, is there one more or is that it? Okay, there's one more nugget. Are you ready for this? Truth and consequences. The truth is, Nugget was at one time a little ball of joy, and now she's turned into a big pain, like overall. My family loves Nugget. I actually love Nugget. Uh, I was in the front yard the other day doing my yard. I was mowing and my neighbor came down. Is anybody in the room have a grumpy neighbor? I got a grumpy neighbor. And so my, my grumpy neighbor came down and, and he, I hope he's not watching right now. That's really good. Uh, I don't think they're on Facebook. But uh, so he came down. He goes, don't y'all have pigs? I was like, well, we have one pig. Okay, we don't, we're not raising a herd of pigs. <laughs> but he's, I said, yeah. He goes, well, your pig's down there in my front yard. And so I'm like, I look down, and I said, hey, there's Nugget. And sure enough, Nugget was like three houses down, <laughs> chilling out, just hanging out in the front yard, doing what pigs do. You know what pigs do, right? They root. Okay, and so anyway, so Nugget is down there just having a good old time. And I said, Nugget, come home. Come here. And guess what Nugget did? She starts the, doing her little run. She ran all the way to my house. And there's me and my neighbor standing there. And he's like, oh, my goodness, are you kidding me? He said, that pig will come. And I was like, yeah, that pig's smarter than you are. Anyway, I'm just like, <laughs> and so I didn't say that. But uh, that pig is amazing. So here's the deal. Truth and consequences. We got this little pig. And I remember somebody told me, I said, yeah, we got a miniature pot belly pig. And the guy looked at me and goes, there's no such thing. And I want to tell you if, okay, I'm, I want you to experience it on your own. I, you, everybody needs to go through what we've gone through. So let's talk about Jonah today with truth and consequence, truth, our consequences. So you ready? This is a really important talk for today. We're looking at, we've already heard some of this, but in Jonah chapter one, we're going to look at some things. But I want to take us back through the journey with Jonah. All right. Before we do that, I want you to know this about Jonah. All right. I hope you're ready. Everybody say, I'm ready. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to do that several times just to keep our prom people awake or our homecoming people awake uh, this morning. And, um, and Ruth tends to doze off too sometimes. But so we'll work on all y'all. Are you ready? Okay, you were drinking. You weren't ready. Okay. So here's the deal. Jonah is not a children's story. Jonah is not about a fish. The whale, the fish shows up two times in Jonah. Ready? God says, whale, go swallow Jonah. God says, whale, spit him out. That's all the story about the whale. So let's kill that, all right? It is not about a whale. So children, Chris and I were talking about, it's not about a whale. So let's get that out of the way. It is a very serious book in the Bible. All right? It is not a light book. I was listening to a guy this week. He studied the book of Jonah for 20 years. Okay, 20 years. I know some of y'all are like, what? And so here's the deal. Y'all, listen, my, 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 this, this Bible that I hold in my hand has 1,300 pages in it. Okay, Jonah gets three. How many of y'all know about Jonah? Raise your hand if you've heard the story about Jonah. How many of y'all know the whole story about Melchizedek? How many of y'all could quote most of Paul's writings? How many of y'all know about the apostles and the disciples? Is anybody, can anybody name all 12 disciples? I'm not, trying to, I'm not going to call on anybody, but Bill, come on up. I want to hear you do it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Everybody knows about Jonah, right? Are you with me? 
Everybody knows about Jonah. I don't think we really know Jonah. So here we go. We're going to blow through some things. Here's at the very beginning, the word of God came to Jonah. Let that rest on you. The word of God came to Jonah. The word was, go to Nineveh. Nineveh was a bad city. It was a dangerous city. It was a cruel city. It was known for its cruelty. It was known for its magnitude. It was known for the number of people and the power and the things that it had done. It was, it was an arch enemy of the people of God. You ready? So it's, a lot of people say Noah was a bad guy. I, I, I got a whole different opinion of Noah. Somebody looks at Noah and they're like, you disobeyed God. Noah's bad. I'm Noah. I'm saying, I'm, I've done this the whole week. I, for some reason, the Lord put Noah and Jonah in my head. I'm not sure why. Jonah, some people think Jonah's a bad person. Here we go. God says, go to Nineveh. Then the job Jonah had was to call out against Nineveh. Anybody want that job? I'm serious. Is there anybody in the room that would love a job to go to a big, powerful city who's known for its cruelty and known for its meanness and known for its like stances against God, and you, your job is to go call out against that city? It'd be like God asking me to go to Philadelphia and talk to Eagles fans. Not that bad. I know you're not. Did y'all snowballed Santa Claus one time? I mean, I'm just joking. Call out against the city. That's what he said. He goes in and he says, but you know what Jonah did? Jonah rose, flee from, and he, but he rose to flee from the presence of God. Y'all, this shows up all through Noah, all through Noah, all through Jonah. It shows up all through Jonah. He was fleeing the presence of God. Let's keep going. He bought a ticket away from the presence of God. Are you with me? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's make sure. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, good. He bought a ticket away from the presence of the Lord. Has anybody ever done that? God spoke to you, do something hard, and you're like, sorry, God, I'm going to go buy a ticket this way. Well, he bought a ticket. He was on a boat. While on the boat, the Lord, the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. Now, there's a lot of people that I don't want to hurl a great wind in my direction. God is the top of the list. I, I, that's the one, God, I don't want God hurling a great wind at me. This is the God who spoke and made everything. So when he hurls a great wind, I want you to think about that with me. This is what happened with Jonah. Jonah fell asleep at the bottom of the boat. So I, 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 have, a, I have terrible sleep habits. I wake up in the middle. Of, I woke up at like 1230 last night, wide awake. At 3, I was still wide awake. I was studying. I was reading. I was thinking about Noah. Thank you very much. You're with me. Jonah. And the Lord gave me a lot last night for me. He fell asleep. Y'all listen to this. We fall asleep for a lot of reasons. The main reasons we're exhausted. When you fall asleep, you're wiped out. When you lay down, you watch TV, and you sit there for a little while, and then you just kind of gradually go to sleep, that's a different. When you fall asleep, that's like I'm wiped. I think a lot of things are going on with Jonah. I think he was really distressed. He knew the call of God. He was a prophet. God said to Jonah, go. And he was like, I can't do it, God. I think he was mentally drained. I think he was wiped out. And I think he wanted to get away from everything as possible. And then once he got on the boat, he knew where he was going. And then he was like, I want to get even further away. So I went to the bottom. He fell asleep. The others on the boat were afraid. Thank you. Pretty simple. Everybody gets that one. They went to look for him and they found him asleep. Captain came down and said, hey, Jonah, everybody else is praying, ready, to their God. What about you? He wasn't praying. So here we go. Let's look at the words in the scripture. John 1, or Jonah 1, 4 through 6. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God, and they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. 
Last two words in that part of the Bible was for them. Imagine this. Imagine Brian is our Jonah for today. Congratulations, Brian. Let's give Brian a hand. We find out that we're all in distress because something Brian has done. There's wind blowing. There's a, there's a great big storm going on. And we're all in the boat. We're like, I think that guy over there did it. Who is that? That's Brian. And we're like, okay, but hey, we got to get this stuff out. And there's, we start throwing the, we start unleashing the pews and we're throwing them out the window and, and we're like digging stuff up and we're, we're trying to lighten the load of the boat, right? Picture this with me. This is like almost comical. You, you've seen a great movie. Think about your funniest movie, your great, most dramatic movie. Imagine this. They're throwing stuff. They're hurling stuff off the boat for them. So really important two words for them. Continuing on, but Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, what do you mean? And what's he call him? And it's on the screen. You what? Sleeper. You sleeper? Anybody in the room want to be called a sleeper? Don't raise your hand right now because we don't want to know that. Anybody want to be a sleeper? The song I was listening to on repeat since 1230 in the morning last night was singing about, oh, sleeper, wake up. God speaks to me like crazy, y'all. I'm telling you, it's amazing. He uses songs. He uses literature. He uses circumstances. I'll be, I'll be preparing a sermon like this one, and all of a sudden a song will come on about, oh, sleeper. <clears throat> what do you mean, you sleeper? He's a prophet of God. Picture this. This is a man called by God to deliver the message of God. In the Old Testament, God spoke through prophets. Jonah's a prophet. He's at the bottom of a boat, asleep in a storm, failing on his assignment, most likely depressed, most likely full of anxiety, most likely feeling guilty because he knew what God had told him to do and he knew he was wrong. So here we go, continuing on, verse 7. And they said to one another, come let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Imagine that. I'm so glad to hear you laugh. There's a lot of funny moments in this story. They all knew it was Jonah. So they cast lots. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be Brian. We all know it's Let's cast lots anyway. Well, it looks like we drew, you know, here's, there's Scott's name. Oh, it's not Scott. We know it's Brian. So it fell on Jonah. You with me? Then they said to him, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. By the way, what's your occupation? Listen to these words. Hey, hey, Jonah, listen, we know it's you, but tell us, tell us, what, what, why has this happened? Why has this happened? And by the way, tell, what's your occupation? He's a prophet. They knew it. You can't hide a prophet. There, if, if you know a prophet in the world, there's no way for a prophet not to be a prophet. Yep, a prophet speaking. You can't, if you're a prophet, you're going to say something. And you're most likely going to offend somebody. You're most likely going to tell somebody something they don't want to hear. That's the assignment of a prophet. Joyful thing that it is to be a prophet. What is your occupation? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew. Ready? Are you ready? Uh, okay, y'all are sleeping on me. Are you ready? Okay, good job. Some of y'all are like, Scott, get over the I'm ready thing. Anyway. I'm not going to get over the I'm ready thing. So are you ready? We're ready? Okay, good. Perfect. I'm a Hebrew and I fear the Lord. Let those words sink in for a second. He didn't look at them and go, hey, this is like, he's talking to like the captain. He didn't say, oh, by the way, you're the captain. I fear you. I know I'm in trouble. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. He says, I'm a Hebrew and I fear the Lord. Y'all, that's a big moment in this, in this story. Jonah feared the Lord. You know why he's asleep at the bottom of the boat? Because he knows he's failing. He's scared. He's worried. A lot of reasons. I fear the... 
the Lord. The God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were, what? What's it say on the screen? Then the men were exceedingly afraid. You ready? It gets worse. They've already hurled things off the boat. They've lightened the load. They found Jonah. They're like, Jonah, who are... Wait a minute. Okay, so you're a Hebrew and you fear the Lord. And so then all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute. We are exceedingly afraid now. It drives me nuts in the world. This is a side note. It drives me nuts right now when I get on a plane or I get on a car. If some of y'all say this to me, I'm sorry. But everybody's like, well, be safe. <laughs> like, what? Really? What am I, I'm stepping off the step, but be safe. Getting on a plane, be safe. Is there something I need to know? I mean, it's like there's so much fear floating. I mean, literally, be safe. I'm, gonna go, I'm running down to the store today. Okay, well, be safe. Be careful saying be safe because you're communicating that there's some big, terrible thing about to get you. That's the devil. Fear is not from God. How about we change it from be safe to be bold? Stop being safe. Okay, I'm off the subject. i got to get back to this. <clears> then <throat> the men were exceedingly afraid, and they said to him, What is this that you have done? He's a prophet of God, y'all. What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. You remember what I said a minute ago about a prophet? A prophet can't keep his mouth quiet. Somewhere along the way, they... Her, he said, I'm running from God. So when that captain floated down, he may not have known for sure, but the word on the boat was that there's a man on our boat who is running from God. It's a big deal. They knew it. Then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down again for us? Hey, y'all, we're all in this story, by the way. Some of us are Jonah. Some of us are on the boat. And we're mad because Brian did something and we're all sitting over here going, dude, what do we got to do, Brian, to stop all this pain that we're going through? That's what's happening here. For the sea grew more and more, and I can't say that word. And so it got worse. He said to them, this is Jonah, this is not Noah, this is Jonah. And he says to them, pick me up and hurl me into the what? Pick me up. Why didn't Jonah just jump in the water? Why, why, I'm serious. That's a real question. Why didn't Jonah just jump in? Dude, I know what jo Jonah's like, man, I know what's got to happen. But he didn't have the courage and the strength and the energy. He had already fallen asleep on a stormy boat. And now he's like, all right, guys, just please, somebody just pick me up and throw me in. Come on, somebody. Has anybody ever been in that spot? Any dads in the house are like, man, okay, just kids, pick me up and throw me out. I can't handle it anymore. Any moms? Yep, moms got loud just then. Dads are like, I ain't saying nothing. If I say something, then I'll, anyway, but. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. It's a, it's a big moment in this story. I love this next one, though. Here we go. 13. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land, but they could not. Y'all, there was a good side of these people on the boat. They're like, we don't want to throw you over the boat, Jonah. Can we all come around that for a second? Even in the moment where you think everybody's against you and you know you blew it, can we all just say, they're not against me? These people really didn't want to throw him over. Because they, it says, uh, they easily could have just said, okay, so they picked him up and threw him over as fast as they could. That's not what the Bible says. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to dry land. Therefore, they called out to the Lord, O oh Lord, let us not perish for this man's life and laid not on us innocent blood for you. They cried out to God. Moving on, verse 15. So they picked up Jonah, hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Get with me on this. It's the movie. All right? The, things have been hurled. There's crazy wind. It's going nuts. They pick Jonah up. They throw him over the boat. Anybody ever thrown anybody over a boat? I have. Okay, Bill has. Okay, so we've done this before. When you, I mean, this is a big deal. It's hard to pick somebody up and hurl them. Let's try it real quick. 
pick, pick, pick your wife up and hurl her across the... How many people does it take to hurl somebody? Let's, hur let's hurl Brian right now. Brian's like, all right, come on. It might take six people. Hurl me. It's going to take seven or eight of you. I'm not saying anything. I just said seven or eight for me, six for you. I knew you were going to say that. That's why I added seven or eight to me. The sea ceased from raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. God, if you free us from this storm, we'll never sin again. Has anybody ever made that vow in the middle of a storm? Just forgive me. I'll never do it again, God. I promise. I promise. We've all been there. They made vows. And the Lord appointed. Everybody say the word appointed. appointed. He appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. I love this. Again, the, 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 like the, the, almost the comedy and the, like the vividness of this story. There's a fish just out minding his own business. A whale. Boom, doing its whale thing. Coming up. You know. And God, voice of God. Hey, whale. I need you to go over there and swallow up that guy who's about to drown in the water. Okay, God, you know. <laughs> Moves on over, better than a shark, better than a tiger shark or a hammerhead. I mean, a hammerhead's scary to me. Whale goes over, appointed by God, and Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Are you with me? Truth or consequences? Let's talk about some truth we see in this story. God speaks to his children. That's a truth we see in Jonah. This started out with God spoke to Jonah. Sometimes the call is heavy. You gotta, you gotta move from the second pew in the church to the eighth pew in the church because there's people on the eighth pew in the church who don't know anybody. I'm being silly. Sometimes the call is something as simple as that. There are new people in our room today. Some of the people who have been here a while, you, guess what? You don't need to hang out with your wife after the service is over or your best friend that you saw. You need to go look. Who can I talk to? That's a simple thing. Some of you might be called out to go to a really difficult place like the Middle East as a missionary. Anybody want to go hang out? in the middle of the Middle East right now? What if God tells you to? You're going to say no and cause all of us to get in a storm? That's a real question. There are consequences to your decisions, to our decisions. God won't stop. It's another truth. I love the story about Jonah. God, God doesn't stop. God's got all day. God's got all year. God's got all of eternity. Hey, Jonah, go to Nineveh. Okay, fine. I'll just wait over here. Hurl a storm. Okay, Jonah, go ahead. Off the boat. Hey, fish, swallow him up. Jonah learned his lesson on the second. You'll hear more about that later. But God's not going to stop. So I just want you to know something. If you're a follower of Jesus and he's asked you to do something and you know he's asked you to do it, you might as well do it because he's not going to stop. God won't stop. His message is alive and, I chose this word on purpose, aggressive. The message of God has always been aggressive. Jesus, my son, go to the earth, be born of a virgin, live as a baby, die at 33 on a cross. That's an aggressive message. Today, this message is aggressive because guess what? The Jonah is us. You're Jonah. I'm Jonah. We're Jonah. The people of God. When you study this book, you learn that it's the people of God. Jonah was fleeing the presence of God. Don't forget that. Don't flee the presence of God. Honestly, this morning, knowing I was going to preach this, when I woke up at 12.30, literally woke up wide awake at 12.30 a.m., I had a lot of things I could have done, and I went, okay, God, I'm going to sit in your presence. I don't want to flee your presence. And I had like a peaceful, like, almost three hours in the presence of God. And I was like, how in the world am I going to wake up and preach in the morning? And here I am. Thank you, Red Bull. Um, 
Last part, God was gracious. God is always gracious. Here we go, consequences. There's a storm on the people around Jonah. When we disobey, the consequences aren't just on you and on me. They're on us. I believe our country is facing massive consequences today because the church hasn't done what the church was supposed to do. Amen. Not politicians. It's the church. It's us. We are the children of God. We are the ones to go make a difference. It is not for us to rely on some agency to do it. It's us. Go love your neighbor. Go be nice to the people around you. Share the gospel. It is us. And until we start saying, yes, God, I won't run to the opposite part of the world. I won't cross the street when my neighbor drives up because I don't like them. Don't you dare tell me you haven't done that. You're in Walmart and there they are over on aisle six. You saw them. So where do you go? Aisle 12. And then you peek. There they Okay, they're almost at the register. I'm going to go get some more stuff. <clears throat> Consequences. Danger. I'm serious. My goodness, y'all. There's danger in not doing what God wants you to do. There's danger. Listen what happens. Potential death. These people were on a boat. Jonah disobeyed God and he almost got a bunch of people killed. We are Jonah. Who's dying around us because of our disobedience? I'm serious. This isn't a nugget moment in the sermon. I'm serious. Who's dying and going to hell around us because we're not telling them about Jesus? Property destruction is a consequence. These guys were losing their boat. Livelihood. All kinds of stuff in this. Consequences to himself, consequences to strangers, people he had never met, consequences to an entire city. If Jonah doesn't finally say yes to God, we don't have Jonah in the Bible like the story today, and we're not sitting here today learning this lesson. This is, these are consequences. So here we go, last part, admit your sin. If you're not a Christian today, you know it. Get saved today. Today. You've played long enough. You've heard the voice of God say you're not a Christian. Get saved today. Get up. Admit your sin. Get up. Jonah had to get up. We got to get up. Obey and do not double down. Sinning one time is bad enough. Sinning the same sin over and 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 over is terrible. Stop. Watch God. Watch God put the pieces back together. You can't watch God put the pieces back together until you act in obedience. Until you say, yes, God, it's not going to happen Last two slides. God's presence is the best place. It is the best place to be. I'm telling you, last night when I woke up and I was thinking, God, I can't, I don't know, I can't be awake right now. I kind of thought it might be 4.30. When I looked at my phone, it was 12.30. I was like, all right, God, I'm just going to sit with you. And it was the best place to be. The last one, get up and sit in his presence. Hey, y'all came to church today. Some of y'all are glad right now. Some of y'all are like, man, I wish I hadn't come for this one. <laughs> when is Pastor Steve going to be back anyway? <laughs> Sit in his presence. Sit in his presence today. We're going to sing. Let's sit in his presence for a minute or two here. And uh, y'all go to your small groups. Don't anybody cheat and not go to class today either. All right. I'm just. Yay. I love that answer. Here we go. I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for accepting for allowing me to do what I do here at Spring Hill. So, here we go. Lord, we love you. We love you so much, God. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this church. Lord, we thank you for all the history of this place. Lord, I thank you for Jonah. And I look forward to meeting him someday. Maybe you'll allow us to meet people in heaven like this. And it'll be a lot of fun just to hang out with Jonah and tell him thanks. And Lord, I pray for, this, for each person in this room right now. And I ask Jesus, if somebody's not saved, that today they would say yes to you. 
somebody's living in sin and doing the wrong things, Lord, I pray today, they would stop, get up, come follow you, and let you put the pieces back together in your name. Amen. For those who don't know Scott Burks and those online, he is our interim youth minister right now, and we very appreciate him uh, being with us and all the staff. It's a, it's a great team to work with. We have a top three, and you've heard this for a couple of weeks. We want to put a little different spin on it. Top three is trick or trunk, but we would love to think about the three F's. If you get invited to something that's fun and you can bring your whole family 
right? You don't have to find a babysitter, y'all. I'm talking, mm, I remember those days. And there's gonna be food. That's my sixth love language, food. So, if you, and free. All right, so uh, we want to be sure that you know this is a wonderful opportunity to meet our neighbors where they are. People need hope. That's what we do at Spring Hill. People need Jesus. That's what we share. And we want to impact the world. And we're going to start with the people around us. So be sure and get the word out. There is going to be fun. There's going to be bounce houses. There's going to be hayride. Of course, just walking through and going through the trunks and getting all the candy. I mean, what's more fun than that than being a dentist at that time of year? Um, food. Free hot dogs. Free hot dogs. Yes. Lots and lots of hot dogs. So free food. And some of y'all might win some good dessert because we're having a cakewalk. All you have to do is just walk around and then you can get some free dessert. So nothing better than that. Family, again, family oriented, family fun. If you don't do trick or treat or trick or treat kind of stuff, that's fine. Just have fun. Just be with the people. Be with our community. Invite your friends. Invite your family. It's going to be a wonderful time. And it is at Dover Foxcroft, which is absolutely gorgeous and given to us, given to Spring Hill, so we can do things like this and impact our community. And we just want you all to know that it is all free, <laughs> but we want to know what we need you to know. This is one of the easiest things and one of the biggest things we do to reach the community. And it's not just a bunch of fun. There will be people out there scanning our QR code. When they scan that QR code, guess what? They're going to be connected to Spring Hill Baptist Church. You cannot go to Spring Hill Baptist Church in person, online, or visit our website without seeing Jesus. So get the word out. It's going to be fun. There's going to be food. There's going to, it's going to be free. You can bring your family. But the main thing is we want to encourage people because we've got Jesus. We have Jesus. We just heard Scott say, who do we need to share with? Well, think about that. So stand, and again, thank you for coming. That's all. You're not even going to pray, because we prayed a lot this morning. Thank you for coming. Invite your friends. There's candy to, to uh, donate out there. We hope that everyone goes to a small group. Youth meet downstairs. Children meet over there. If you don't know where to go, ask somebody. Bring them along. Thank you for coming this morning. Okay. Enjoy your family.